Hi again, uh, here we are to talk more about um, Xcode and table views and uh, showing data in the table view. Um, in the last couple of videos, we built a simple app that displays, you know, these strings in a table view like this. And when you tap on one of the rows, it takes you to a detail view and it takes the string with it and passes it on to this view and we display it, right? So that's okay, but really most often what you're going to have is you're going to have a lot of information. So imagine that, you know, our table view here, rather than just, you know, having A, B, C, and D to display, it had a person's name or the name of a movie or, you know, the name of, you know, some other feature or automobile or delivery address or something. And when you tapped on it, not only did you get the name of the thing, like the person, place, movie, whatever, you also got all the information about it. This could be a user's name, and this could be all of their profile information. And maybe you could edit that profile information here and then go back, right? Or imagine this was a movie name, and you got here, and you saw the movie, and you saw details about the movie, and you could set a rating for the movie. Like you could rate it like one to five stars. And then you could go back and see your rating here or rate another movie, right? Okay, so... Just as a quick review, the, um, the current app gets all of its data from an array, and our array is pretty simple. It's got a, a, a kind of a basic data type called a string, and the string is, you know, just one piece of information. So it's really difficult for us to store all of that other information, like the rating or the, the description for the movie, the reviews for the movie, you know, or other data in this, this one array. I mean, you could work things out you know, you could maybe make a second array, you know, var array number two, you know, equals some other information. And this could be, you know, your rating. This could be a one star movie. This could be a two star movie. You know what I mean? But you'd have to sync your arrays up. So if I have four items here, I'd have to have four here. And then it would be a little awkward having, you know, two arrays. And then if we had more than two pieces of information, we'd have to have a third array and a fourth array. You could do that. You could also use a dictionary, and that might work, but then the dictionary is a little difficult to work with, too, um, and, you know, that has its own problems. Really, what we should do here, the best approach, I think, is to create a struct or a class, and for right now, let's consider those both the same. They have kind of a fundamental difference, but essentially, the way that we work with them, they're almost identical, okay? Um, so, and I'll get into the differences later, but, uh, but, you know, right now we can kind of consider them the same thing. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to put one object here, not a string, but another type of object that contains multiple pieces of data that we can customize. Okay. So how do we do that? So we'll start with a struct. Okay. And you can define a struct anywhere. Right, you can put it in this file here. You could, and you define it like this. We'll have to put it outside of this class. Okay, so a class begins with class, the name of the class, and then the curly braces, you know, are the code block for the class. And in between the curly brace, this one and the one at the bottom here, th this is all of the information that the class holds. So essentially, the information here is arrays and functions. Okay, so every class object is a collection that means a whole bunch of stuff collected together and it's a collection of properties and methods okay so property is another name for variable and method is another name for function and a struct is the same thing okay so you could make a new class here you could say class you know movie except you'd want to spell it right and then you could make a var called name of movie right And you could set that to a string, and then you could maybe make a var that was the date of the movie or the year, you know, like what year the movie came out. And maybe that was an integer, right? And then there you have it. You have a special class that is named movie, and then it has, you know, a name and a year associated with it. What is this thing here? Oh, I have to include an initializer, right? Because I didn't uh, set the property there, and I got to do the same thing here. So let's say 1900, right? Okay. Um, we'll get into that later, right? So there's a class. Hey, you know what? A struct looks like this. 
Okay, so, oh, look, it's a struct. It looks almost the same as the movie, except it begins with the word struct instead of class, okay? Um, so classes and structs are almost the same. They have a couple differences um, that we'll get into later, and I'll, I'll, we'll do an example that, that will illustrate that. But essentially, if we make an object like this, we can make new instances of this and store movies in the array. And so every element here can be an object that has both a name and a year and any other properties that we care to add, okay? Um, you can define a struct or a class within any file anywhere in your Swift file, you know, as long as you don't do it inside of another class, right? Um, though I think you can actually do it there too, but it, that kind of has its own um, issues. But uh, but anyway, so you can define this anywhere. The best place to do it is actually to make a new file, right? And actually, that's what's happening here is they're defining a class called View Controller. This was kind of the default file that came with this with this um, project when we created it. And they, uh, you know, the 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 default system created a file called View Controller. Right, so that's kind of the convention that they use. Is essentially you make a file, name it after the class that will be, you know, defined in that file, right? So you can see here we've got you know class view controller, and this is defined in the file viewcontroller.swift, and then later we created another class called um, details view controller. So there's class details view controller, and this is defined in a file called details viewcontroller.swift. <clears throat> okay, so why don't we make a new class file called movie, okay? Or actually, we'll make a struct, okay? And then we'll do a class later. Um, so I'm going to do a new file, command N, or you can do file, new file, right, from the menu here, right? Um, so you can choose that if you want. And then you can choose iOS. This Cocoa Touch class gives us kind of templates for default files. So if we want to make a view controller, it kind of adds a little bit of extra code in there, not much. But um, we don't need that for our struct in this case because we're going to make a brand new one from scratch and we'll just write all the code ourselves. So in this case, what we're going to choose is Swift file. And I'll click Next and then we'll give our file a name. I'll call it a movie. And then we can save it into our project folder. And there's our file, okay? And what we'll do is we'll define it first. We'll say struct, and then you'll see that it gives me sort of a default um, setting here. It says struct name and fields. We'll call this movie. So by, by convention, um, structs and classes begin with an uppercase letter. So the name of them, or their name, should begin with an uppercase letter, okay? So I'm following that convention here. You'll see view controller follows the convention, and details view controller also follows that convention, right? So there's movie Swift, or right? And I'll, I'll let me move it here, and I'll name it movie, and then it says fields here. So let's decide what kind of information our movie is going to have, right? So what I'm going to put in here is I'm going to make a var, and I'll call it um, name. So that'll be the name of the movie. Um, I'm using a lowercase letter here to start the name because our properties and method names always begin with a lowercase, and that's how we can tell them apart from the class or struct name, right? So I'll say name, and then we'll set a type here, and it will be a string. And then we'll say year, colon, and it can be an int. And maybe we'll add a third piece. We'll say director, right? Like this is who directed the movie, and that can just be a string also. <clears throat> and there's our struct. Okay, and we can add a lot more to this if we want to add functions or, um, you know, an initializer and all that other stuff, we can put that in here too. But this struct can actually just live with just these three properties, and we could add more, but, uh, but I think that that'll work for now. So we'll put the three properties in there and save, and then we're good. And uh, then in the next video, we'll pick up how to use this. But essentially, this is a, um, a structure that has three properties, and anytime we make an instance of this, it will have these three properties, right? And we can set those three properties to any value for any instance. So essentially, we can describe a movie by giving it a name, a year, and a director, right? And then we can make as many different movies as we like, and they can have different, each one can have its own different values for name, year, and director, okay? And we'll be able to store these in place of 
the strings that we have here in this data array that we were using originally, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll finish off uh, in another video.